Hello everyone, this is Yolanda from the Art Crafts channel and today's tutorial is we're going to learn how to make these cute little um, box. It's all uh, crocheted, has its little handles here and this one I'm just going to be using it. I'm going to give it as a gift. I'm going to make three of these small ones for a baby shower so that's why I'm using this soft baby yarn. If you don't have, this is a size 6 super bulky. If you don't have the super bulky, you can also use two strands at one time of the medium weight, uh, worsted weight yarn like Super Saver or any type of thing. I know that um, the Simply Soft Caron says that it's a size weight 4 but it will not work for this project. It's just not thick enough or stiff enough and it will collapse on itself. So you might have to go to, like I said, the Super Saver. It works really great and then you can make them in all different colors. You could also make them in tan or taupe and they look like little baskets. On um, This little container is just a, a little rectangle and on this side if you can see, you have little openings to carry them. And that might be helpful once you have it full. For this, I'm just going to be using um, the this super soft yarn. It's a size uh, 6, super chunky. And it's this Bernat baby blanket. It's so soft and it's so cushy. It just feels wonderful. If you've ever used it for blankets, it just comes out super great. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby in Temecula. I love that store. So anyway, unfortunately I have to drive like an hour to get there. So this is going to be a tutorial. This could be made in three sizes. This is a small size. It could also make, be made in a medium and large. You can continue increasing the size of the of the basket. All you're going to do instead of starting with uh, the 16 chains that we're going to start, then for the medium you're going to start at least 19 or 20 chains. And then the larger one, you add, add another three to four chains. And then they will all sit inside of each other. I'm making three small ones for this gift. I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial. Please be sure to subscribe. And let's get the party started. Okay, everyone, to begin, our little um, yarn basket, I'm going to be using a size K hook, which is a number 10 and a half. And it is 6.5 millimeters. I'm using my little grips here because um, it'll keep me from getting hurt. Although I did smash my hand in the door today and I just have, I don't know if you could see, it's already a blood blister and it's really hurting. <laughs> so we're going to need a, a super bulky yarn. I'm going to be using this baby Bernat blanket, but you can use whatever kind of brand you have. It just needs to be the number size 6. Um, and so here it gives us a size 6 and then our needle suggestion, which hook suggestion, which is a size K, which is what we're using. Um, so since this I cannot um, wind up in my ball, I hope it's going to not be too hard to work off, off it right off of the skein like this, okay? So here, to begin, we're going to be doing just our regular slip loop. And it's pretty bulky, but I love the way it feels. And this feels wonderful for baby blankets. It's just like chenille. So you're going to make your slip loop here. Okay. And see how bulky that is. Let me see if I can get closer there. And I'm going to chain 16. So go ahead. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. I try not to uh, crochet too tight, but I always seem to do it. So now here I'm going to do in every chain, I'm going to do a single crochet starting in the second chain from the hook. So I'm going to go ahead and do one chain. In one, excuse me, one single crochet in every chain. Okay, so go ahead and do that all the way to the end. Okay, everyone, I reached my first um, chain here. So to go up, I'm just going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work over, and then I'm going to do one single crochet in every stitch across. Okay, don't do it on the same one. You're going to go into the next one, and then at the end of your your stitches. Your last um, single crochet will be on top of here, okay? So go ahead and I'm going to do one single crochet in every stitch. And I'm going to do that until I have nine rounds, so nine rows, excuse me. So this is my second row. 
I'm going to continue working until I have nine rows. You want to make sure that you're going, when you turn over here, I chained one, I start my next single crochet in the next chain, work one in each one. At the end here, my last single crochet will be on top of my this stitch here and then when I come back to the end my when I turn around to the next row then my last single crochet is going to be on top of the first the chain that I used to go up so that way you can make sure it stays nice and square and now no side is getting bigger than the other so go ahead and do your nine rows of single crochet and it's going to be feel super soft Okay, everybody, I finished my row, uh, ninth row here. Try to get that a little bit more focused there for you. And so here now what I'm going to do, I'm going to chain one. Okay, I'm going to turn my work over. And then here, on this row for row 10, you're going to do one single crochet, but you're going to be working only in the back loops, okay? So here, we're not working in the same stitch. So here in the next one, we're going to go ahead and do one single crochet in each chain but only in the back loops okay and this is what's going to be for this this whole row there you go it's going to be one oops here ouch I'm trying not to get touch my hand so go ahead and do that one single crochet in the back loops only for the entire row so I'm going to go ahead and finish this row and they should be creating a little ridge like that okay so then I'm going to come back when I finish here then we'll work on our next nine rows okay so I finished that last stitch there on my back row now I'm going back loop, excuse me, I'm going to chain one and turn it around. And now I'm going to do nine rows of single crochet going through the entire chain, not just the back loop. So here, going through both of them there. And I'm going to do this for nine more rows. So when I do my, um, my row here, this is row 10. So there's nine here, and then on row 10, we worked on the back ridge. So we're going to have 10 of these rows. One, two, I'm going to do eight more, and then I'm going to stop, and then we're going to come back, and I'll show you how to do the other side. So go ahead and do 10 of these rows. So here, actually nine more of these going, it's nine rows of this going through the entire chain. Your 10th row was only the back loop here for rows uh, 11 to 20. It's going through both loops. So I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way back, all the way to that um, last row, to row 20. Then I'll come back and then we'll work the next ridge and then the other side. Okay, I finished row 10. So these are 9 rows, then 10 rows here. Now to go up, I'm going to chain 1, turn my work around. And then this row, again, once again, I'm going to do a single crochet but working in the back loops only. Okay, so only in the back. Yes, I apologize. I'm still learning how to use this camera, but so far I am loving it. Gosh, I still get excited when I think about it. So here, you're just going to do one row here, one double, one single crochet in every chain here, but you're, in every stitch here, you're only going to do it in the back loops only. Okay, so here, back loop only. So all the way around, across. When we get to the end, then I want you to chain one, and then we're going to do nine rows. Excuse me, is it nine? Excuse me, eight more rows. This is one, and then you're going to do eight more rows of single crochets. But this time it's going to be through both of the 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 whole chain. Okay, so then you're going to have nine on this side as well. So you have nine on, on either side, and then you have ten, nine rows on either side, and then nine, uh, ten rows in the middle. So here's my last one here. Okay, so now I'm going to single crochet, chain one, and now here, now I am going to go one single crochet through the whole chain. Okay, 
So that's this is my second row. And I want you to continue this until you have nine of these rows of single crochet, okay? So this is going to be the middle and then two sides. So go ahead and continue that. So then here you now you see that this, when we did the back loop, it shapes one part of the basket and then this one is shaping the other part. Then we'll work our other sides and handles. Remember, this is, you can do this in a set of three. This is the small size and then your medium size when you would begin your chain instead of 16. Then you're going to do um, 16, you're going to do 19. And then the larger size instead of 19, you would do 22. You could either that four chains or three chains to each one, okay? And then you're going to do the same nine rows, 10 rows, nine rows, nine rows, nine rows. So the only thing that changes would be the beginning, um, the beginning chains. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing my 10. This is my nine, my nine rows on the side here. So there's one, two. I'm going to do my other chain, my other um, stitches, and then we'll come back and work the sides. Okay, everyone, I finished my 10th row, so I've just fastened off and left a tail. Now here, um, we're going to be working on these two, on this side and this side. So what we're going to do here is if you look here, turn, you can see where the little ridge is from where I started my lines, my um, working only in the back loops. Between that place and the next ridge up here, okay, you're going to, we're going to attach our yarn here and I want you to work 10 single crochets. Since these are the posts, you're just going to try to do 10 single crochets into the back loops. So um, I think it actually only turns out to like 8 or something. So here where my little, that's that row with the back loops, I'm going to attach there but only to that back loop, okay? Oops, this has a little knot. Let me take that off. How did that happen? Okay, so I'm going to attach my yarn here and just kind of attach this here. And then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to go back into that same place and only into the back loop and do a single crochet. So that's one. Here's another one, two. You need to work uh, ten make sure if you only if you need to work a little bit more two and then it's three uh, four some of them are hard because they're only the the um, ridges okay so here I have one two three four five I'm gonna do another one there two five because that's a halfway point six Seven, oops, I'm here. Seven. So you just kind of have to work them in there because eight and uh, here nine. So I'm going to have to do nine and then another one there. Ten. So I have ten there. And I worked them only in the back loop of that little, of that post. So now I'm going to go up one, turn my work around, and work one single crochet in each chain. But I'm going through the entire chain this time, okay, through both sides, through both loops of the chain. And I'm going to work until I have uh, nine, nine rows. So here's one, there's my first, second. I'm going to continue working that way until I have my nine rows and then I'm going to turn it around, turn my work over and then I'm going to attach my yarn the same way on this side, okay? So the next time I'll attach it here and then I will attach it in my other, uh, end it here on my ridge. I'm going to work ten single crochet, excuse me, I'm going to work ten single crochets in between these so it'll match the same thing I'm doing here, okay? So I want you to go ahead and finish your nine rounds here. And I'm gonna have, nine, not rounds, I'm sorry, nine rows. Then I'm gonna come over and attach on the other side and then we'll finish that side. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, don't do nine rounds. Ah, 
right here we're going to do six rounds and then we're going to leave an opening for the handle so I'm sorry let's do six rows and after the sixth row we'll come back here and I'll show you how we're going to do the little handles for the sides okay I finished my sixth row so now here we're going to work on seven is where we do the openings on both sides on uh, opposite sides here so here I'm going to chain one I'm going to turn my work over and now I'm going to do a single crochet in each of the next three. So here's one, two, and three. And then here I'm going to chain four. So that's one, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to leave on work the next four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to attach my yarn, my next one here, that's going to create the little opening and it's really small but you could put your fingers in there and lift it up. And remember, um, you can make these in little sets so that you could have them fit inside of each other. So that's my row seven with that space there. Now I'm going to do two more rows, nine and ten, excuse me, eight, nine and ten, so three more, one. I'm going to turn over Excuse me, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine rows. I think it is nine. Nine more rows. So here's seven, now eight. Now here on row eight, I'm going to have, excuse me here, I'm going to have one um, single crochet in each chain including the one the three chains that we just made okay so here I'm going to go into my chain there's one two it's kind of hard to see because it's so fluffy the material which I just love how soft it feels if you haven't tried this for blankets you really should and now here I'm going to finish on my other side. Okay, make sure I have enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. And then so that's row eight. And all we need is one more row, and this side will be done. So we'll have nine rows on our sides. So here. Just started doing the same thing. And this little opening looks small because it's your small bag. Remember when you do the bigger ones that you can um, um, have them stack inside of each other. This I'm making the small size and then on my blog, if you please visit my blog within a day or so I should have the written instructions for all the sizes. Okay, the only thing that changes is your beginning chains. So here's my last row. So that's how my side looks. I'm going to cut my yarn and pull it through. And then I'm going to have to um, sew that in together. So, so far, it just looks like, um, what do you call it, uh, a little um, triangle, I guess, like this. Okay. So now we have three sides done. Now all we have to do is do this side. So, I'm going to turn over my work here. Remember, these are where the little ridges are. That's the sides for the outside. So, see here, this is how it's going to shape up. The little bass, little box. You could put baby's um, uh, toys or rattles. And then, remember, you could make, this is a small one, and you can make it two bigger sizes so they um, stack inside of each other. So, now here, I'm going to do the same thing you did here on this side. You're going to do on this other side. So here, in the same place where the ridge was at, I'm going to attach back loop only, work 10 single crochets here, turn around and do 6 rows. On the 7th row, you're going to work 3, and then 3 single crochets, leave, do 4 chains, leave those 4 and work, and then connect in your other spaces there, okay, 3 on either side, and then you do 2 more rows of 1 single crochet. So you're going to do the same thing you did this way. You're going to work here. 
make sure that you're not attaching into see here that's on the back loop and then um, I try to work some of the tails in so that I don't have to sew too much but sometimes you have to sew I just I hate to say it so here I'm gonna go ahead and do my first single crochet go back into that same space and work a, excuse me one chain and then do a single crochet in the back loops and I'm gonna work try to get uh, 10 single crochets into this space so you have to count along to make sure you're having this is two and then three so I'm gonna repeat this very same thing I did on the other side here and then when I finish doing that, then we'll come back and put, attach our sides together and then do the trim around the top to kind of stabilize it all. So see here, I'm just doing the same thing I did down here. So I'm going to finish this side. You're going to finish it in the same way you did this. And then we're going to come back and we'll put it together. This, um, our sides are done here and the front and the bottom. So now here, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it up, making sure that the ridge where you worked only on the back loops are is, on, is facing to the outside, okay? And you'll be able to see because it kind of wants to shape itself that way. So you can begin in any uh, corner. I'm going to be um, working these tails in when I do the edge all the way around. So what you're just going to do is fold, fold up your little basket, and then you're just going to get your hook, and go through, you don't have to go through both of the um, uh, loops, usually I just go through one, because this is so bulky. Um, just go through there, and then I'm going to attach my yarn. I'm going to uh, hide that tail as much as I can, because since this is super chunky, I can't really weave it in with the needle. I have to just use my hook to kind of um, loose it in there. So if you're just using the two strands of yarn, then it's a little bit easier. So here I'm just going to go ahead and try to hide my yarn there. I'm going to start by grabbing that and making a single crochet there. The rest of these I'm just going to, um, you're just going to grab them, your back loop and your other back loop. Let me move this so you can see what I'm doing. So here I'm just going the back, one of the loops, okay? Um, you don't have to do both loops, okay? And then... I'm just going to pull it through and I'm going to slip stitch and then I go to my next loop here and you're just going to make sure you're lining them up so I did that one there so this one's going to be here pull your yarn through and whip stitch that just kind of slip stitch excuse me I don't know why I said whip I've been sewing earlier and I'm thinking whip stitch so here I'm going to continue that till I get to the top edge. I'm trying to move that yarn so I can see where I'm at. Here we go. Okay guys, I can't see. <laughs> I was like, maybe I should wear my glasses. Somebody was saying, why are you always losing your glasses? I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's just one of those things that I tried using those little chains, but it kept falling. They were too heavy and they kept falling off my head. So I'm just going to finish up here. I'm almost getting to the top. And it is quite bulky because it's like the super, super bulky one. Which is why I like how it looks so fat. Get it through there. And my last one here. My last stitch there okay so this is how I connect the sides just like that and I'm gonna do it for the lat next three sides for this side this side and this side these tails I'm gonna work them in when I do my single crochet all the way around the top so I'm not too worried about that right now okay so here's another tail that will be getting worked in so I'm going to fasten off right there, okay? So that's your first first corner is done. And now it's going to you can see how it stands up even without the other corners yet. It stands up. I'm going to do the same thing here, just start in the corners and work up. 
So go ahead and do that for your other three corners. And then we'll come back and work one row of single crochet around the top to kind of just hide all those tails and to get it all nice and stiff all together. So here I'm going to go ahead and finish my other three sides working it in the same exact way that I did the other side. Okay, so go ahead and finish your sides and then we'll come back and do the top. Okay, as you can see, I finished sewing in, uh, sewing on my sides and this is how it will sit up. I think it's really cute. Remember, if you don't have the size 6 chunky yarn, you could try doing, you can do this with the, um, using two strands of medium weight, worsted weight yarn, like Super Saver, or any kind of medium weight yarn. The Simply Soft, even though it does say that it's um, a size 4, I tried it and it was too soft and it kind of collapses on itself. So this is the back, the little box when it's done. Here are my tails. I'm going to kind of work those in when I'm working the top. So one will go to one side and the other one will go to the other. This I only have one so that's not too bad. So what I'm going to do here is on the top, any place here we can begin. I like to start close to the corner so that I can finish there as well. I'm going to put in my yarn, attach my yarn, oops, it's on top of it. And then here, I'm going to grab this yarn. I'm going to tie it to one of these little tails so that it doesn't fall apart. Just to grab that tail and to kind of hold the corners. Remember, the tails don't have to be this long. You could uh, trim it. Once I have it there, I'm going to pull in my tails. See how they're kind of crazy? And just do a single crochet there. Now, I'm just going to be working a single crochet in each of my stitches here, each of my um, my chains here. When you get to the other side, you're going to be working on the foundation row, so you're going to just do it just through there, just like if it was the regular chain. That's the way we start. We started the whole project, and then in the corners, if you want to just do um, two in the corner, like. Instead of doing just one, you can do that. I'll show you right here when I get to the corner. Or you could just do one. It'll just kind of close it up a little bit. So here, now you see that, that tail, those two, two of those tails are gone. They're hidden in there. Because this chunky yarn, there's no way, I haven't found a way to sew it. I have used a, a crochet hook to weave it back and forth. That's about the only way I can do it. Um, so here, I'm going to be coming up to the next corner. See, I have one tail here and one there. Actually, oh, that one has two. So I want to make sure that now that I'm a little bit further away, let me trim this a little bit. I'm going to start working this tail in here as I work my stitches because I don't want them all to be bulked up in one side. And I know that the tail is sticking out there, but that's okay. We could trim it once we get closer to the end. You just want to grab that there. Okay, so I know that that's sticking out. So it's already hidden here, so I'm going to trim that. I'm coming to my corner. There's two tails. Usually you'll have one. or So here in the corner, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and do two single crochets in the corner. So one, two. Then I'm going to go into my next. See how it's a ridge? I'm going to go here into my first. Single crochet there and grab it there. Okay, can you guys see that? I don't know if it's clear enough. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm bearing this time, I'm bearing those two tails in and just working around and going this way around. It's so weird because I'm not used to using the big hooks. Uh, and even with the big hooks, this is really hard, so I always put the cushion part. I did a little video on how to do that, just a tip. Um, I just wrap it there with the rubber band. Some people, I know Teresa Richardson does a little um, plastic tubing, but I couldn't find any. So when I went to the stores, I thought, I wonder the rubber bands will work. So she always has such great ideas. So here, See now, it's all, it's all finishing it off all together. It looks so much neater. See than just having it like this, 
I think once you do that edge, it looks much neater. Plus, it gives you the opportunity to hide in all your tails, okay? And then any tails that are left, like that little one that's pointed up, it's already dug, it's already buried in here, so I could just trim it. So here now, I'm in the corner, I'm gonna do two here. In the last stitch, you're gonna do two to kind of help you move over to the first one on the next side, okay? So now I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna bury my tail and see how nice it looks. And this is the foundation row. What, what I mean by that is where this is where we started chaining, so we're gonna go in through these. See how I'm going in through this space? Just like if it was a regular, it is a regular chain, but that's just the bottom part of the chain where you start it. And I'm burying in my tail. And when I finish with this tail, I'm gonna use my crochet hook to kind of hide it in there, okay? So that way I only have to worry with about one, one, um, one tail instead of more. If you wanna do more than one row around, you're welcome to do so here. And like I said, if you go to my blog within a couple, two to three days, I'll have all the. Um, it just takes me a little bit while, a little while to do this, guys, to do the uh, come up with the ideas and then do the video. Here's two. I'm gonna put two in the corner, and here is. Let me move my tail. Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna pull out a little bit here. Because I thought I only had one tail here, but I have two. So I'm going to bury one on this side and then the other one on the other side so it doesn't make too much of a bulky spot there. Sorry, guys. So now I'll only have one on the other side. Okay, so here's my last one. So now I'm going to do two in the corner. Okay. And that kind of helps me work over to my next stitch, which is here. I'm going to bury that tail. See how nice it works where it just buries it all? And this is cute because what you could do with this too, like when you get the other little little cloth um, baskets or even the wicker baskets, is once you get dirty, I don't really know how you would clean a wicker basket. I'm sure there must be a way to do it, but I, I don't know how. What's great about these is that you could wash them in your washing machine in a gentle cycle. Whenever I wash anything that I've crocheted, I always put it in a hosiery bag and sip it up. That way I'm making sure that none of my yarn is gonna get caught on the agitator, get caught on other clothing, and then get ripped out. So you put so much work into your your stuff. You don't want it to tear out. So here's my last one. Pull out, do two in that corner. And I'm going to slip stitch into my next side here. Okay, that tail's getting kind of caught there. Slip stitch. I'm going to make pull a tail there. Pull it out. Okay. And now this one, I'm going to just work it in with my hook. So here's the top. Let me go back and I'll show you how we work in that other tail. Okay, now my little box is finished. Isn't that cute? This is the small size. And then on the block, I'll have the sizes for the medium and the large. Remember, it's the same. We're going to be working the same way. The only thing that changes is your beginning chain. For the small one, we started with 16 chains. With the medium box, we're going to need at least 19 or 20 chains to begin and then the larger box then you will need to have at least 23 or 24 chains and then they will all sit inside of each other but it's cute you could put them all or you could make them all this all the little ones here you could put in your um baby powder other things you whatever you put for ch children little washcloth so here we have only one tail left i can't sew this because it's too thick so i'm just going to use my hook and I don't want to go all the way to the other side because I don't want it to show. See here on the other side, it's not showing. So I'm just getting the top loops here. And the back loops, I mean. And pulling it through there. 
just like that. See, it's not showing on the other side. You don't want it to show. So here, maybe, okay, uh, up here. You're just going to grab it, whatever you can. I'm just trying to get it out from the top of that thing there. And then maybe another loop. Uh, maybe I'll just grab it here. Oops, I don't want it to go to the back, sorry. I'm just grabbing it from the back loops. Grab it there. And then bring it back up this way. And once I grab it there, I'm bringing it back up again. Okay. Basically, I'm just weaving it. Once I've done that, it's already in place there. You can go ahead and cut that. And now, my little blah. My little box is ready. I love this. It feels, I wish you guys could feel how soft this yarn is. Um, and it's wonderful for little um, blankets. So here is the little basket. Here's your handles. I mean, you don't really need it because it's so small. But I think it just makes it look so cute. And if you do them, um, you could do this for your sewing room or your craft room for your house. You could use whatever uh, color yarn. This is, I'm just doing this for a baby's room. So I'm going to do three little ones because she wants little ones. And um, here you could just stack like, you know, um, maybe, um, like I say, your uh, baby powder, lotion, maybe a little rattle. If you make the bigger ones, the larger size, you can stack in your diapers. Just like, you know, put them, you know, next to each other like this. And so this comes in three sizes and you could just make it as big as you want just by adding um, intervals of three to four chains when you start. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's a little bit kind of different. It's just a little box. It's a, to make kind of like a look like a little basket. Please share my videos with your friends and family or put them on your Facebook page or your other pages. And um, that way it helps me grow my channel. I really appreciate you guys so much. I'm so excited because this past week we just got to 50,000 people. Yeah! So thank you guys all so much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And I want to thank you all. Have a great day. And remember always that God loves you.